All right, how's it going guys? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're gonna be reading a book called Lily, Lily Macaroni and what it's about. So let's get going. All right, so I saw this book at the library and I saw that there's an activity at the end. So I figured it should probably work for art. So let's get going. So this book is by Nicole Testa and illustrated by Annie Bolanger. And I just figured I'd give it credit, but um, let's get going. All right, so here we go. I'm excited about this book and I'm excited about the activity. I saw a little preview of it. Okay, um, first page. My hair is red, just like mom's. I have dad's freckly nose. My eyes are blueberry blue, just like grandma's. And I have grandpa's magical laugh that makes everyone smile. And I am the way I am. I'm Lily Macaroni. Sounds like a fun family. Each morning I wake up my doll, Pineapple. My hippopotamus eggplant and my pirate Petey. I read aloud my favorite books. I make up songs and stories and drop polka dotted butterflies. At night, I count the stars. The room's pretty cool. One day, Dad says, you're getting big, Lily. It's time you went to school. You'll learn new stories and the letters of the alphabet, how to print your name and the days of the week, and how to add and subtract. And best of all, you'll meet so many new friends. All right, looks like she's at school. At school, I meet Eleanor and Frankie and Lou and Fatou. I learn to print my name, Lily Macaroni. I learn how to draw chalk pictures and play hopscotch. I listen to new stories and I count lots of things, not just stars. I learn about butterflies and moths, blue ones, orange ones with pretty designs and black and white ones. My favorite is called the Luna Moth, but I never find anything like my polka dotted butterflies. I learned something else. My new friends laugh at my name. They call me Lily Macaroni and Cheese. At first, I think it's just a mistake, but after the second time, they call me Lily Macaroni and Cheese. And then the third time. I don't like macaroni and cheese anymore. My new friends make fun of my hair. They say it looks like a pumpkin hair. After the second time, and the third time, I don't like pumpkins anymore. They say my eyes are squinty like blueberries. I don't like blueberries anymore either. They say I have spots on my nose. I wanna scrub, scrub, scrub those spots away. They say I laugh like a parrot. There's no magic in a parrot. I learned that a heart can ache and blueberries can cry. Looks like people are making fun of her, that's not cool. I don't laugh anymore, I'm too sad to play. Why didn't mom, dad, grandma, or grandpa tell me it wasn't good to be Lily Macaroni? Uh oh. I decided to erase Lily Macaroni and draw a new girl. This is Sophia. She has black hair like licorice, straight like uncooked spaghetti. Her eyes are like chocolate chips and she doesn't have freckles. Not one. But if I take that all away, mom's hair and grandma's eyes and dad's freckles and grandpa's laugh, how will they feel? If I erase Lily Macaroni, won't they be sad? So I tear up Sophia. I am the way I am. Sophia is not me. Good for her. How do you get rid of a heartache? Sorry, how do you get rid of a heart that aches? Do you put on armor and chase it away? Trap it in a net? Turn the vacuum on it? Hide from it under the blankets? Dad has a better idea. Draw one of your butterflies. It'll help fly the heartache away. So I draw a beautiful butterfly and cut it out. That night, I clip it onto my shoulder and my heart does feel a bit lighter. The next day at school, I tell the teacher and the whole class why my heart aches and why I need a butterfly on my shoulder. No one makes a sound. Mrs. Tamara gives me a hug. We all feel a little heartache from time to time. I like your butterfly solution, Lily. 
on Monday of the next week, I am in for a surprise. I see butterflies everywhere. Even Mrs. Tamara is wearing one. And nobody calls me Lily Macaroni and Cheese. Not even once. How cute. I am bigger now. I love my red hair, my freckles, my blueberry blue eyes, and my magical laugh. I know my heart will ache from time to time. Whenever I hurt, I know I can make another butterfly. And some of the heartache will fly away. Wow, her room looks way cooler now. <laughs> One day, I'm going to write a book about the polka dotted butterfly and how it carries heartache away on its wings. It's not like any other butterfly in the world, like me. My name is Lily Macaroni. I am who I am. And she framed her first butterfly in case of a heartache. The polka dotted butterfly. Active time, anytime, any day or night. Habitat, the shoulder. Habit, it seeks out hearts that ache, then flies the sad away. All right, so basically, you, I'm pretty sure you guys know what the activity is. We're gonna be making a butterfly. You can cut it out if you'd like. And then if you wanna attach it somehow to either the wall or like a picture frame or yourself, you can. So let's get going. All right, so I have my handy dandy sketchbook right here, but I wanna be able to cut it out. So I got a bunch of paper right here. And um, I thought about folding it this way and just having it long ways like this, but I feel like my butterfly would look a lot better if it was horizontal. So first thing you're gonna need is a blank sheet of paper like this, printer paper will do, and something to draw with. And if you want colors, colors will be just as fine as well. But uh, what we're gonna do is you're gonna take your paper and I want you guys to fold it in half, okay? Just like this, doesn't have to be perfect. See, mine's not perfect. This looks like a normal card and we're gonna keep it like that. Now, here comes the cool step. So we're gonna start drawing the butterfly. I'll show you guys step by step what to do. Uh, we will use, let's see, I'll use a gray marker because I don't want it to go through. Actually, no, let's use a gray crayon. All right, uh, you guys can use whatever you want. Uh, you can use pencil. Um, I think pencil will work better for you guys. Only reason I'm using crayon is so it looks better on camera. Let's use, uh, let's see, this gray is a little bit darker. Okay, here we go. Now, on the seam where you fold it, so this is the part that opens, this is the part that doesn't open, I want you guys to draw, it's gonna sound weird, half a hot dog, okay? So, <laughs> hot dog, you normally, it's like an oval, right? Or like a long, long rectangle with rounded ends. You're gonna draw half of that, okay? Once you draw half a hot dog, just like this, so that's half a hot dog, right? I want you guys to draw a half circle on top, and that's gonna represent the head. So I'm gonna go from here, and go to there. So that's half a hot dog. So now you can kind of tell what we're doing. We're doing gonna, we're gonna be doing half a butterfly. And that way when we cut it out while it's folded, it'll turn into a full butterfly, right? So let's start doing the wings. Uh, you can look at references from online or uh, rewind back to maybe a butterfly that you saw in the book. But um, I'll show you guys the easiest thing you can do. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go from here in between the hot dog and the half circle. And I'm gonna go kind of make a big loop and meet to the center of that hot dog. So I'm gonna go from here big loop and me right there so that's the top wing and the bottom wing I'm gonna go from here we can go from here I'll go from here so it's a little bit easier to cut go from here and then probably where right where the curve starts so I'm gonna go from here go around and go right there all right so that looks really cool right so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take a pair of scissors if I had any so give me one sec <laughs> All right, found a pair of scissors. So what I'm gonna do is while it's folded, I'm gonna cut out my butterfly. Now, um, a smart thing to do, if you do plan to color outside the lines, I'd probably save cutting for later, but I do wanna be able to show you guys what it looks like when you cut it from the beginning. So I'm about halfway there, if not more than halfway at this point. And then um, I'm going to cut around here. Now, if you want to make antennas, make sure you don't cut it. Uh, antennas are really hard to cut around, but I'm not going to add antennas on mine just because it's going to be really flimsy. The paper's going to be really flimsy. So here we go. So it looks kind of like a butterfly, but it'll look more like a butterfly once you open it. So here I go. Now it's open. And ta-da! It looks like a half butterfly. Now you do have the pencil lines, or in my case, the crayon line right here. Um, if you just turn it over, it'll disappear. Um, but if you're like me, if you want to complete it, 
you can. So I can find that great crayon I just had. I can kind of complete that hot dog shape right here, just like this. And I can kind of complete that half circle, like so. And then if I want to continue that line of how it was divided, I can go like that. There. So now I have a little bit of a, more of an idea for my butterfly. If I want to trace out the outside, I think I can. Um, I think I might just do this. Why don't I do it in thick marker? Just so you guys can see a little bit better because it's kind of like white on white paper so it's a little bit harder to see. So why don't I just take a nice fresh page. Um, let's see, what's the page I'm not using right away? I'll take the back of the book, how's that? Why don't I just ugh, save this page? I'll just use this. Back of my sketchbook. All right, can you guys see that? So what basically I want to do is uh, just outline the outside of the butterfly just so it's easier to see for you guys all right just like so oh a little rough there we are i think i might retrace this part right here just so it's easier for us all to see all right there we go i'm gonna do the outside of the head we are and I am going a little bit off the edge so I'm glad I have something underneath and I'm not ruining any tables or surfaces that I don't want to get ruined like I have a white table here I definitely don't want to get marker on it but it is an art table so if I do it's okay but I really would like to keep my art table nice and clean all right there we go like I bet you guys would even know that this table from the is from the 70s. It's an old uh, drafting table from the 70s for architectures. Um, all right, so I'm gonna complete. Let's have a butterfly there and right here. All right, so this step right here that I just did is just an extra piece. Um, I wouldn't do it if you don't have to. <laughs> uh, but I just did it because. It'll be a lot easier for you guys to see on my paper. So can you guys see the butterfly a little bit better? So now we have this. Um, I don't think I'm gonna teach you guys symmetry in a kindergarten. So what symmetry basically means is if it's the same on one side, it basically mirrors another side. Um, it's too advanced for you guys. But if you do wanna know what uh, symmetry is, we don't normally learn it until second grade. So, <laughs> so basically I'll teach you guys real quick. So if there's like a swirl that looks like this, on this side, it's gonna mimic on the other side as well. Just like that. So, um, what I want you guys to do is just decorate the butterfly any way you want. You could do like flames, you could do polka dots, just like how it is in the book. You could draw something related to something that you like right now, maybe like Pokeballs or anything, or like game controllers, or like unicorns, or I don't know, art supplies. <laughs> you do whatever you want. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna decorate any way I want, and I'll go from there. So here I go. And I think I'm done. So this is my simple butterfly that I did. And I think it's a really great activity coming from this book. And I really like it. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I can't wait to see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.